Number 46. Determine the normal boiling point in Kelvin of dichloroethane, which is CH2Cl2. And then we have to find the actual boiling point using the internet or some other source. What other source nowadays, right? We're going straight to the internet. And we have to calculate the percent error in the temperature. Explain the differences, as if any, between the two values. Okay, cool. So let's first do the first part. We have to find that normal boiling point in Kelvin. Now, a boiling point, they did give us the units, Kelvin, but a boiling point is nothing more than a specific temperature value, right? Now, we're looking for a T. Now, boiling specifically means that I'm taking a liquid and I'm going to a gas. So specifically of CH2Cl2. So I could write my balanced equation. So I know that I have CH2, Cl2. This has to be a liquid and I'm going to boil it, which means that it's going to vaporize, right? It's going to evaporate. And that always is turning into a gas. The equation is balanced already, so I don't have to worry about that. And now we just need to find the temperature value of this phase change, right? We're talking about a phase change. We have the same compound. It's just going from a liquid to a gas. So the, the underlying information here is that if you have a phase change, which is what we have here, a phase chase, a phase change, Every time your delta G value, your Gibbs free energy, since you're not adding any additional chemicals, right? You're just taking your one substance and turning it into a different phase. It's a physical change, right? Phase changes are physical changes, not chemical change. So that means that your delta G value, your Gibbs free energy is equal to zero. So nothing chemical is going on here. And if I just... And if I just maybe bring this over a little bit, the units, it doesn't really matter because zero is zero, but the general units for uh, delta G is kilojoule per mole. Okay. So that's like the underlying number that we have. So now we basically say, okay, I have a delta G of zero and I'm solving for a temperature. What is the formula between delta G and a temperature. Well, there's two of them, right? There's one with the equilibrium constant and there's one without. Nothing about equilibrium constants here. They didn't give me any K values, so I can't really do anything with that. So I go with my other formula, which is this. My right? delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Here's my delta G. I know that this is zero already, right? Zero kilojoules per mole. I'm solving for that temperature, but the thing is, is that I don't have a delta H and I don't have a delta S. So that's why I have to go in the back of the textbook to find out those values. And that's exactly what I did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on hold. Maybe we'll put this over to the side for now. I'll clean it up in a little bit. But what I want to do is I just want to now bring in these values because in order to use this formula, I have to find out the overall delta H and I have to find the overall delta S and then I plug it in. So let's just make this a little bit nicer. So I'm going to bring in my delta H values and I'm just going to line them up. So CH2Cl2 liquid, that's a negative 124.2 and then a negative 95.4 for the gas. So this now goes bye bye. And I'll do the same for the S values. So we'll bring this up. That looks good to me. Maybe I'll put it here. 177.8 for the liquid. And 270.2 for the gas. And then I could get rid of this. And now I could bring this maybe down here for now. Okay. So now let's work with the top one, right? We have the delta H values, the enthalpy for each individual component, but what's the overall delta H for the whole entire reaction? Well, that's when we use this formula right here, right? Delta H for the whole entire reaction, and maybe I'll just do it on the side here, equals 
Rxn means reaction, so the whole delta H equals the sum, that's this little symbol, so sum, aka you're just going to add everything up, the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. So basically it's just products minus reactants. But are these numbers going to change? Well, it all goes back to your balanced equation. For both of these, you only had one of each. So in essence, what you would do is, is you would times both of these by one. But one times one is the same number, so I'm just going to leave it as this. And there's no multiple substances on either side, so these would be your final numbers that you take. And then it's just products minus reactants. So let's go for it. Delta H for the whole entire reaction equals the product one, negative 95.4, minus the reactant, which is negative 124.2. So let's find out what that delta H is. So delta H for the whole entire reaction, negative 95.4 minus a negative 124.2. Negative 95.4, 124.2, looks good to me. There we go, 28.8, so it's endothermic. And this is in the units of kilojoules. Because when we multiply by the coefficients, those are mole values. So the moles cancel out. So this would just be kilojoules. And you have your first number. Now we have to do the same thing because we want to solve for the delta S value. So maybe I'll just bring this over. Maybe I'll hook this up over here. Because I want to now work with the delta S's. 177.8 for the liquid, 270.2 for the gas. I can use the same formula, which is this one. But instead of saying H's, I can just get rid of all my H's. Goodbye. 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 And I could work with S's. So delta S for the whole entire reaction is the sum of all the S products minus the sum of all the reactants. So products minus reactants. Same exact idea here. You only had one of each, so you would times them by one, but it's the same number. So I'm just going to plug those values in. Delta S for the whole entire reaction equals 270.2 minus uh, 177.8. And then let's see what we get here. Delta S for the reaction is 270.2 minus 177.8. Looks good to me. 92.4. Units here, moles cancel out, so it's just joules per Kelvin. And now we have the delta S value. Okay. So we have a H value of 28.2, actually 28.8 kilojoules. We're solving for T because that was the normal boiling point, and we have the delta S value of... 92.4, and that's joules per Kelvin. Now, whoa, 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 kilojoule, kilojoule, joule. They all got to match. The units of energy have to match. Now, since we have two kilojoules already, it would be easier to just convert the joules into kilojoules. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just take this 92.4 and I'll say, okay, how do I go from joules per Kelvin to kilojoules per Kelvin? Well, joules to kilojoules, we just divide by 1,000. Similarly, take the decimal, move it to the left three times. So this would be 0 0.0924, right? One, two, three, one, zero. Yep, looks good to me. So I'm going to just erase the 92.4, and now I'm going to say, okay, it's now going to be 0 0.0924, and that's now kilojoules per Kelvin, and we're good to go. So let's plug it in. I'm going to just bring this a little bit higher. There you go. So now we have 0 equals 
0.8 minus x times 0 0.0924. Let's just solve it on out, right? We want to get x by itself, so I'll minus the 28.8 on both sides. This cancels. So we have negative 28.8 .8 equals a negative. Maybe I'll just put the number in the front, 0.0924x, and that's a negative. So then just divide by that value, negative 0 0.0924, negative 0 0.0924. Cancel this out, whoop, whoop, okay. Let's see, x equals negative divided by negative is a positive, so 28.8 divided by 0 0.0924. Ooh, that's hot. 300, I guess. Um, I guess we'll do, how many sig figs did we have in the end here? Three, so three sig figs. 312. So 312. Kelvin. Okay. So that is the normal boiling point in Kelvin, 312 Kelvin. Now we have to find the actual boiling point using the interweb. So that's exactly what I did down here. I looked up the, the actual boiling point of CH2Cl2, which was given to me as 39.6 degrees Celsius. So let's just quickly convert, and maybe I'll say that this is the actual boiling point. So this is the internet number. Let's just convert this Celsius into Kelvin. Celsius to Kelvin, we could plus 273. So we'll say 39.6 plus 273. I get 312.6 to 312.6 Kelvin. Okay. So if we if we took this value as the same decimal place, this would be like 311.7, and this would be 312.6. Okay. So now, explain these differences. Oh, we have to calculate the percent error. So before I do anything, let's just say that this one was calculated. And we have the actual value of this. So before I, if, you know, before I erase things, because I don't have any room, I just want to say pause the video if you need to, but I just need to get rid of some math. So maybe I'll get rid of this, this math over here, because this is kind of long gone. So bye-bye. Okay, so we have an actual value of 312.6 degrees Kelvin. And we have a calculated temperature of 312 degrees Kelvin. So let's find out percent error. Remember the percent error formula, right? Percent error equals, this one is a big division sign. Maybe I'll just cut it off a little bit because at the end we have to times by 100. It's always your absolute value of these two subtracted from each other. Doesn't matter whether you say actual minus calculated or calculated minus actual. It does not matter because whatever value you get, you always take the positive. So we'll say actual minus calculated. And the divided by the denominator is always going to be the actual one, aka the, the theory one, the theoretical one. So in this case, our percent error is going to be, let's see, we're going to take the absolute value of 312.6 minus 312 and divide it by 312.6. Uh, so 312.6 minus 312, right, percent error equals 0 0.6 divided by 312.6 times 100. So let's just find that out. And then I could put it right over here. Percent error 
equals 0.6 divided by this number. And then I'm just going to times it by 100. Ooh, that's a really small percentage. So maybe 0 0.12. I mean, technically, we had, you know, one sig fig going on over here. So technically, it should be 0.2%. Uh, you know, 0 0.19, 0 0.2. Does it, does it really matter? No, not really. But that's your percent error. Explain the differences, if any, between the two values. Now, to explain the differences in any between the two values, I mean, the percent error is very, very, very small. It's like 0.2%. So we know that we did it, you know, we have a, you know, a precise um, calculated value of 312 degrees, uh, 312 Kelvin. Um, the differences basically come from how we found it, right? In our calculated value, we have delta H and delta, you know, delta H and delta S values. So we used delta H and delta S values instead of actually attempting this uh, boiling and to check a actual temperature. So could become, you know, could be due to rounding, right? These numbers, maybe in some textbooks, they'll be a little bit slightly uh, rounded differently. So rounding is an issue here for your delta H's and your delta S uh, values. But overall, your percent error is only 0.2%. So that means that these two numbers are very close together. And that's that. What'd you think? I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for being part of this community. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. So let's keep working hard. Keep studying. Let's keep learning. And good luck on your tests and quizzes. I'm rooting for you. Okay. Bye-bye.